You know, every guy needs to tinker on a combine every now and then. Farmer's got this one for sale, but she don't run. So I thought I'd shoot over here and see if I could help the feller out and get her fired up. Them running machines, they bring more money, you know. The good news is, it hasn't run in years. And the bad news is, last time I worked on an International 915 was, well, never. And I know absolutely nothing about them. You know, my dad had a 615. Well, maybe it was a Massey. I don't know. What I do know is I threw a croissant wrench to the side glass there. In my defense, I was trying to get her up on the top step. No, no, I was trying to hit my brother, actually. But anywho, let's go ahead and do the 197 point walk around and see what it's going to take to get this old dinosaur fired up. These here 15 series started in 68 and they ran though 75 or 76. Started with the little 315 and went to the 615, 715. There was an 815 and then if you guess 915 you got it. And basically that was a little 70 horse guy all the way up to the 150 horse unit here. She'll hold 146 bushels or 5,100 liters. This thing right here was king of the Golden Sea back in the day. If you have one of these parked in your yard, probably had the marshmallow vest, belt buckle, and a silver radio with them dual antennas just whipping. Basically, everything I want. These were a really, really good machine. If you got a grain header on them, Including that all the way back to the straw spreader. You're looking at 34 belts and chains on this puppy It's I mean, how is your brain now? Definitely gonna need some help on this one. So I brought Brad with me. What do you think so far? Looks good. Looks good? Oh, I'm glad you're confident Well, let's walk around this thing See if we can figure out what we're working with. This seems fine. We got 14 backup lights. We got more wrenches in the garage. Dad, we got a pickup tire. What's this thing? I don't know. That's spec. 36.9 pounds. Good enough. Wow. Oh, yep, that's probably good. Should be a fuel tank in here. Yep. We got fuelage. This seems fine. Forget about that. No battery. And both the cables are black, so that really helps. And then the fuel tank, she's running an electro digital pump over here. So we'll have to figure out if that works or not. You know, since she's got a corn header on her, guy's gonna go on ahead and guess she ran corn last, but we'll see if we can tell. That runs your shaker deck. Oh, here's that deck up here. She wobbles around. Here's your screen. Oh yeah, see that back there? Yeah, she ran corn last. That all looks pretty good, actually. Let's jump up in this thing and see what the cabin's going to tell us about it. I just ain't got the agility I used to. Oh, smells like a wet grain bin and grape upon. 
Oh, we got keyage. That's good. She's a pretty complete little unit here. She's got the hydromatic on her. You know, boop, boop. Should be a three speed. Yep. So here's your speeds here. And then the new trellis. Throttle. Yeah. Brakes. Ooh. You know, there's nothing. You don't need them. But everything's looking pretty good. No hour meter on these? Wow, I just can't believe it. You know, this giant cab size, and then the AC, this was the big updates on the 15 series. And you don't want one of these or two of these in your teeth. You just need 15 of them blowing on you. What have we got? Two, three speed fan? I'll be dipped. Really not much else in here. That's a plus. I don't even think that's been used on. Might need that today. Nothing that's really got a date on her. Pretty good looking cab, actually. Oh, mirror even works. All right, we'll crawl up to the engine. Brad's up there with the lid open. Should be a 304 or probably a 345 International. How'd you get up there, dang old billy goat? I gotta pass you here somehow. Oh yeah. Let's see. Two barrel. That's gonna be a 345, pretty sure. And, hmm. Looks pretty complete. I gotta get something to... Hey Brad, you wanna grab a bungee cord? And yeah, we'll snip this lid open. Hey Brad, don't tell your mom you're up here, okay? Okay. Let's see, what do we got? Will this hook onto that? That does absolutely nothing. Maybe we gotta bring it all the way around the unit. You know, maybe bring it over here and then bring it back. Like that. There we go. Okay, so that means the hydraulic pump should be over here. My legs just bound up in these dual stacks. <laughs> yep. There's the pump tank. There's the pump starter. The old reservoir tank. We'll check on that. And basically, I'm just sitting on top of the engine now down here oh let me get a better angle at that manifold we're gonna be tinkering on this anyway so I'm gonna have Brad take off the old inspection cover here so we can shoot right in and get access to the engine and I'll start tinkering on the other side This is what I saw from up top. This manifold used to have cracks on it, but she's clearly been fixed. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just leave this alone. This looks fine. We ain't gotta worry about that. We'll probably definitely end up throwing some plugs in it. First, we'll see if we can get her to turn over by hand. And then we'll do the usual. If it spins, we'll try to get some fuel on her figure out the battery situation, see if the starter still turns it over, check on the fluids, and then, you know, we'll just see if it lights off. This does have a governor on it. Hopefully that's all tip top, probably not, that's fine. Well, since there's 97 belts on this thing, I think a guy can just bind his arm up into here and just pull on this fan and see if we can get some turnage. Oh yeah, we got positive turnage. So that's good. So I think 
we'll probably just uh, throw a battery in it and see if the starter engages. Then we'll go ahead and spend the $12 in spark plugs. You just, we can't, it's not a time or economy to waste stuff. So we're gonna have to trace on the old battery cables. Both of them are black and of course they go way up here then they're going to shoot the cross up to that starter. So what I'll do is have Bradley trace them for me. And then he'll shout down. Let's see. Whether it's on the inside or the outside. And then I can mark that one off down here so we get around the battery right. So we traced this one to be the positive. We got the battery set in here. I'm going to have Brad turn the key in a minute. See if this electro-digital pump is wired into the ignition or if there's some other switch somewhere to fire that up. You want to hit the key Brad? Okay that's good. Clicky clack is working. So I'll jump in there and see if it turns the engine over. All right we'll see if this thing spins over. Yep. So that's good. This might not be so bad. Well, she's running leaner than an Olympic sprinter. We could probably dial that in on the fuel and make it happen a little bit later. Just adjust it maybe a little bit. Bradley's changing the sparkulators out. We brought the lightning whirler and all the accessories and stuff like that just in case. So guy Mazel will just throw them in or up here and fairly easy access and then that might help her bark off a little bit easier for us too. You gotta be careful with all these. The plugs are just buried back here in gunk. Guy doesn't want to drop any of this flavor down into the cylinder there. That'd be a bad day. <laughs> this side's a little more difficult. The boy'd probably fall in there and work his way out of the bottom somewhere, but same story, old AC Delcos. At least when they were put in, they did all eight and just didn't do the front for the easy. I'm gonna work these in over here. Take me a little bit, especially this one, you know, down in there. I finished the sparkulators up, and since my face was wedged down in here, I noticed she's got a new Fram filter on it. So that can't be but more than a couple few years old. So I think we're going to skip on changing that. Why don't you pull the dipstick, Brad, see what she's got in her. It's full. Full? Got enough? Yeah. All right. I'm sitting on the radiator cap. We'll check that. And then I think we'll dump some gas in it and see if we can get her to fire off. I didn't bring a fuel filter that looks like that. <sighs> Hopefully that's not plugged. No oh, weird yellowish brown floaties. Just pretend we didn't see that. She's full. I'm glad we did bring a cap. This is the roughest one I've seen in a while. You can get in here and file a little bit and try to clean these up, but these are so cheap anymore. A guy just throw a new one in pretty easy. I'm gonna file on these points. I did open this up and they look pretty rough, so I got Brad jumping down. He's gonna get my Super Point Filer 9000. They're pretty rare tools, but he should carry one. I'll show it to you in a minute. And then we'll just kind of clean this up just a little bit. And we'll make sure we got spark in here first before we slam it all back together. But it all looks pretty good. And actually, mice haven't gotten into anything, which is great. So this here is my Super Point Filer 9000. It may look like your wife's fingernail board, but you got them confused. Once you get this in there, just nah, 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 ouch, horsefly. Uh, you might want to blow them off just a little bit before you throw them back in the drawer. Your wife's fingernails rot off. You might get in a little bit of trouble. that spin it around get a tickle on the other side 
and then just pretend to blow it off. Brad's up there in the cab there. We're gonna do this the old school way. I didn't bring much of anything for tools. Great. So one of three things is gonna happen. I'm gonna get shocked. I'm gonna get shocked and verify spark or nothing. Okay, crank it over. Okay, stop. All right, we got spark. We're gonna run this fuel pump here and see if it'll suck up some fuel. Got fuel there. Should right away. Hit the key. That line's about to burst, so I'll do nothing with that. I think we're good. Maybe I'll crack it up there just to be sure. Okay, turn the key on. Off. Got fuel edge. Definitely. Went in my teeth. Well, we got off of there. All right, should we see if this thing fires up? Yeah. Okay, key on. A little bit of throttle. Give it some choke. Choke again? Look at that, idling already. It says we got oil pressure, it's charging. Fuel gauge might even work. Barely up. Let's give her some onion. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I like the way this combine sounds so much, but I'll take it. Let's go throw some high trans in her and see if we get this thing to move. This thing here is a good machine. We didn't even have to hit it with the laughing gas or anything. She fired right off. I got no movement in her. I got no hydrostatic action. So I think it probably just leaked all the oil out. It's sitting in just a lake of oil. So I'm going to take a couple gallons up with me and top off the high trans and then see if we got some play in her. All right, should be some jugs back there. Got some crows. Well, she is drier than a mummy. So I'm gonna dump 58 gallons of oil on this thing and hopefully that works because I don't have filters and I definitely don't know nothing about this pump later down there. So here's hoping. Put the dice in here, huh? Yeah. Yeah, she's official. Should we go for a cruise? Better up. Got it. Let's go with second gear. We 
didn't adjust the mirrors, Bradley. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. What was that noise? I don't know. Get out of here before we hear weird stuff. <sighs> well, this was surprising. I came here just ready for a fight today, and this thing didn't fight us at all. Topped her off with some high trans basic maintenance, and Bradley sent her. Gave her all the onions out here for a bit. Good run of machine. She's got a high trans leak somewhere there, but you just keep topping her off. Hopefully the farmer could sell her and get a few bucks and move on to the next one. Did you have fun today? Yeah. Awesome. I had fun driving it. Good. You did good today. Let's go get a steak, huh?